Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to an in-depth guide to philodendron care. So the care tips in this video are not specific to one particular philodendron. You can actually apply these tips to, well, any philodendron. Philodendron are probably my second favorite genus of plants due to the fact that they're relatively easy to care for and they're pretty tolerant of low light as well. I think I like philodendron specifically so much because they really do come in all shapes and sizes. For example, you have long leaf philodendrons such as the bill tie here. You have various different forms of big heart-shaped uh, leaved philodendron. They're really cool as well. So Gloriosum, Pastazanum, Plowmanii, all of those kinds of things. You then have all kinds of philodendrons with interesting shaped leaves. For example, the Florida Ghost. That's like my favorite plant ever, I think. But generally, you can find whatever kind of thing that you like that suits you in the philodendron family. So I do think they're plants that are definitely worth to have in your collection. So I'm going to cover this video in sections and I'm going to timestamp the sections here of what I'm going to talk about. So if you don't want to watch a particular part of the video, you can just skip it to the part that you feel is most relevant to you. So the first topic I'm going to cover is watering. Now, believe it or not, watering actually took me a little while to get right. It's actually the reason that this video has been delayed for so long. I know you guys have asked for it for so long, but it's the reason it has been delayed for so long. And that is because I previously watered my philodendron in the same way that I would water my alocasia. So when I water my alocasia, for example, I actually completely flush them through with water. Now, in my experience, I've found that philodendron just don't seem to take too kindly to that. So people ask me, you know, how many times a week do you water your plants and they are never happy with the answer I give them because my answer is always, you know, it depends. And that is because plants should be watered when they need watered. So plants shouldn't really be watered on a set, you know, day of the week. Plants don't work like that. Water consumption in plants actually varies quite a lot depending on your conditions in your home or just the general weather. It can depend on a lot of things. For example, if a plant is pushing out a new leaf, water consumption will go up. If it's a much hotter day than usual, water consumption will probably go up and in addition to that, the water that's in the soil will probably evaporate much faster, so you'll actually lose additional water from your plant. If humidity is generally a little bit too low, water consumption will also increase. And of course, if you move the plant and you boost it, you know, into more light effectively, then it's probably going to consume more water. So you need to be prepared for that. Conversely, of course, in winter, you know, plants don't necessarily need as much water because they're just not getting as much light. So they can't basically process what they're being given. So it's usually the reason why a lot of plants get overwatered in winter because people are still watering them the same amount than what they would in the summer months and they haven't kind of dialed that back and adjusted that for the winter months. So you're probably by now thinking, oh my gosh, okay, like when is it good to water them? I have no idea now. And the answer, and my answer to this, and this works across all of my plants, it's something that I absolutely swear by. If you watch my videos all the time, you probably know what I'm about to recommend, but it is one of these. This is a moisture probe. So what you do is you stick this probe into your soil and it will actually measure the moisture level in the soil. But I think I said this in a Calathea video quite a long time ago now. We don't know what moist is. A lot of people have different interpretations of moist and a lot of plants need to be kept moist, for example. So this meter will tell you what moist actually is and when your plants need watering. Now, this probe here, it doesn't take batteries. It is super, super cheap on Amazon, by the way. It's less than $10. I think it's about like maybe seven British pounds, something like that. But you just, you need to pick one up. Mine is actually a three-way meter. You don't need it. It measures light, pH, and moisture. But honestly, I just use the moisture. I don't use it for anything else. So you stick this meter into the soil where the root ball is, and it will read out a number. On this particular dial, I have one being, you know, the driest, and then we have 10 being the wettest. Now then. So after after some trial and error, I actually figured out the number that most philodendron require, you know, to reach on this meter before they need watering. And that number is number three. Now, this number happens to be the same number as my alocasia need watering on. Any alocasia doesn't matter. They reach a three, you water them. Same thing with philodendron, only the watering style, as I may have mentioned before, is different. So with an alocasia, I flush them through. With a philodendron, I don't. I actually take my watering can, I go in circles around the soil surface, 
and I just fill, you know, I water the soil until it feels like, you know, that would hit the bottom. Does that make any sense? Like I'm not flushing it through. I'm not necessarily waiting to see loads of water run from the bottom. I may be waiting to see a couple of drops drip from the bottom of the pot or whatever, you know, it's sat in. I don't completely flush these through and I've found that my philodendron are much happier doing it that way. If I've ever flushed them through, I get yellow leaves because I've overwatered them and they're just not happy. So I do recommend buying one of these, waiting until the number three hits on this dial, then water it. As with watering anything, obviously if you water and then you go away and then you come back, if your nursery pot is sat in a decorative pot, do check and make sure that there's no excess water in the bottom of the pot. If there is, remove that and put it back just so that your plant is not sat in excess water because that's really going to affect a philodendron and you will probably get root rot and you'll probably lose your plant. So make sure that you do check for excess water. In terms of the type of water to use, I use filtered water. Rain water is also good, but one thing you must must do, no matter what the type of water is, give the plant you know doesn't have to be lukewarm water but not cold water either because cold water if it hits the root system can actually shock the plant and this goes for any plant by the way and the plant can go into shock and basically drop leaves so you need to be super super careful about the temperature of the water you're giving it lukewarm would be ideal um you know room temperature kind of temperature is quite fine cool water is fine just make sure you don't have you know ice cold water or you may see some really nasty side effects Moving on to light. So as most of you may or may not know, philodendron are actually known for being pretty low light tolerant. And that is true. But I mean, as with any plant, if you give it a little bit more, you know, than what it can tolerate, it's obviously going to thrive. So if you can give the plant a medium light situation, then of course, feel free to do so because you will really see the benefits in the growth and the overall kind of perkiness of the plant, I guess, if you move it into better light. Generally with light, bright indirect light is pretty good. Um, don't put your plant anywhere that you couldn't comfortably read a book in without having to turn on any kind of lamp or anything like that. That's probably what is best for a philodendron. As I say, they can take lower light, but if you can boost the light, honestly, you will see the effect pretty quickly. If you see your philodendron getting a little bit on the leggy side or just not growing at all, this is probably due to not enough light. I've never had issues with leggy philodendron, but I've 100% certainly had issues with philodendron that literally don't grow. I have philodendron since I've moved to this new place that have started growing like wildfire. And in my last place, they just didn't grow at all. And that's clearly because they didn't get enough light. They had enough light to sustain themselves, but they literally, like they weren't growing, they were just frozen in time. So if you see that happening, I would bump the light. I think that's the first thing you should try and do. Humidity and temperature. I'm gonna start off with temperature because it's the quickest, but for temperature for your plants, generally speaking, keep them warm. 24, 25 degrees is nice. You'll probably see huge growth spurts in about perhaps 27, 28 degrees, providing it is humid. Like. I've had summer weekends here where the humidity has been up and the temperature's gone up and the plants have, I swear to God, they've grown an inch in a weekend. So bear that in mind when you're taking care of your plants. Now, I'm not suggesting to put them on heat mats or anything like that, but if you can keep them out of the cool, that will certainly help them grow a little bit better and they should probably thrive a little bit more because at the end of the day, they are tropical plants. So as such, they do need you know, tropical temperatures. So in terms of humidity, I would honestly say do not give your philodendron, any philodendron, less than 40% humidity. Now in my home, I actually class 50% humidity as kind of like a DEF CON level. If you don't know what that means, it's basically like my minimum level that I will accept my humidity to be at. Otherwise, it's not good. I'm going to start panicking. Honestly though, for philodendron, I would say 40, but really they're not gonna thrive in 40. So they will accept 40 and be okay. But to get them thriving, really, I would say the 60% range. 50 is absolutely fine, but I find 60% to be honest, generally for all my houseplants is a pretty good sweet spot. So you might be thinking, well, how do I know how humid it is? And the answer, again, I'm going to recommend a product, is to buy one of these. Again, very, very inexpensive on Amazon. I believe this may have been about 10 British pounds, I think, but it is basically a hygrometer, which is a humidity you know, meter mixed with a thermometer. So I can see the lowest it's been in here, the highest it's been in here. Uh, that goes from humidity and temperature. I can see right now the humidity is it's probably not 66. I think that's because I'm near it right now. Call it 60, 65% in this room and it is 26, 
we'll call it degrees in here so it's pretty darn warm also i'm sat under lights so that's probably boosting the temperature a little bit but i have one of those meters in pretty much every room of the house sometimes i have more than one meter in the room like i'll have a meter over there i have a meter over there i'll just kind of spread them out so i can get a gauge of how humid the house is if you want tips on how to boost you know the humidity for your plants i will do a dedicated video on it but for now i'm just going to recommend a good humidifier there are many good different types of humidifiers out there i will link uh, below the one that i use mine has a very very big tank it has like a 360 degree nozzle so you can have mist going in different directions from the same unit which is really good so I do recommend that product because I have about three of them in my house and they just kind of set humidity for an entire room rather than a local area of plants but if not there are plenty of options on Amazon so many affordable options and some of them look really cool by the way so you can have quite a lot of fun shopping for a humidifier look at the reviews, you know, find one that works for you, but I can massively, massively recommend a humidifier for your plants. A quick note on different types of philodendron and different humidity levels. So I have found that one or two philodendron do require a little bit more humidity than others. And that's not to say that without the extra humidity, they will die or anything. It's just... I don't know, they just don't seem to grow quite as quickly. For example, a lot of my big heart philodendron, right now I'm thinking about my philodendron McDowell, even Gloriosum though, if there is not enough humidity, a lot of the times the leaves that are, you know, spiraling out, they won't unfurl very quickly. It'll take a very long time for them to unfurl. So if you find that happening and you find that you're having new leaves on certain plants and they just aren't unfurling very quickly, try boosting the humidity and I think you will find that they will open much quicker. So with feeding, I actually feed my philodendron maybe once or twice a month, just depending. I do not feed them at all in the winter because honestly, philodendron, well, a lot of plants generally go pretty dormant in winter, so they do not want to be sat in any additional chemicals. So in winter, please skip your fertilizing. If it's winter right now, put that fertilizer away. Don't pick it out till spring. You don't need it right now. In terms of any liquid fertilizer that you're going to use, please, please, please use half the recommended strength of that fertilizer because certain plants just do not like being fertilized even though it is the recommended dose so the best way to combat that is do half whatever the supplier whatever the manufacturer recommends because honestly you can always add more in two weeks if you feel that it wasn't enough or you haven't seen any change in your plant so less is more okay Please remember that less is more because if you over fertilize pretty much any plant, you can do a lot of damage to the root. You can pretty much burn the root. So please be very, very careful with your fertilizer. A quick note, and this is an unusual one on particularly hanging philodendron, I've noticed if I fertilize my hanging philodendron, I've found that the plant will get generally a good growth spurt but it will actually grow a lot of small leaves, like the leaves just aren't as big as what they would usually be. It's just something that I've noticed. So what I actually recommend to do on hanging philodendron, if that kind of thing bothers you, is to actually go down to a quarter of the strength and not half strength, just to give the plant a little bit of a boost, but not to promote these, you know, loads of these tiny little leaves because we want the biggest hearts possible. Repotting and soil. So first of all, repotting. So how do you know when you should be repotting your philodendron? And I guess this goes for all plants, not just philodendron, but generally speaking, if you are watering your plant and you know you come back a couple of days later and it's bone dry, and usually, you know, on average, your plant takes five days to get dry. Now it's taking about two or three. You know there's an issue there. I would honestly check the roots first because I would assume at that point it's probably um, root bound. Don't rely on checking the bottom of your pots for roots poking through. The, honestly, I used to use that method of checking and it doesn't work. I've had so many plants where the roots have just spiraled around the sides and nothing has come out of the bottom. You know, don't use that method to check. Do check the roots thoroughly yourself because if you're looking for a little root to come out the bottom, it may not happen. And you may be sat with a root bound plant for longer than is really necessary. And if you wanna get good growth out of your plant, obviously you need to keep on top of repotting and make sure that that stays in check. In terms of a good philodendron mix, I do use, to be honest, I use the same mix for most of my aroids. I just maybe slightly adjust the ratios of the things that I'm putting in. I can do a proper dedicated video on aroid mix. I know a few of you guys have actually asked for that, so I'm totally prepared to do that. Just let me know in the comments and I will kind of go into detail. Generally speaking, I use a mix of, what do I use? 
perlite, orchid bark, a natural fertilizer and coconut husk. And I will mix that up into like a big bowl and use that for my plants. If you're still not sure, just go ahead and Google a, you know, a good aroid mix and a good mix will probably pop up. So the last thing I want to cover today are really some suggestions on philodendron that you might want to try out. These are reasonably easy. Now I could quite easily go into a full blown video on this. So if you'd like to see a video on, you know, easy philodendron, then I would be happy to make that for you. Please leave a request in the comments and I will be sure to read that. But I'm now going to cover some reasonably easy philodendron across different types of philodendron, if that makes any sense, which it will in a minute. So my recommendation generally, if you just want to get your philodendron care down, honestly, it is the same thing I recommended in my alocasia care video, and that is to simply just get a philodendron that is easily replaceable. So maybe a philodendron imperial green or philodendron imperial red or something like that. Perhaps maybe some sort of Congo, not a pink one. Anything that you can replace if something goes wrong. But I don't want to recommend anything exotic. If you've never owned a philodendron before, I would rather you went out and you bought something that was easy and got the care down for that, got the watering down and then moved on to other things. So I'm going to break down very quickly some different types of philodendron. So the first types of philodendron that I can think of are hanging philodendron for that i recommend of course the wonderful scandons and in addition to that the micans i do find that the care for those generally is exactly the same what i mean by that is they're as easy as each other it's really not an issue if you want to own either the care is just the same so if you own a scandons and you really want a micans go for it for more bright colored philodendrons i recommend the philodendron prince of orange is a very nice one the philodendron moonlight is a very very bright one and also the painted lady is a nice one as well those three are kind of not on the neon side, but they're very, very colourful. If you're looking for a more colourful kind of philodendron, then they could be nice ones for that. Again, care, reasonably easy, not a problem. Big heart philodendrons, the philodendrons that most people crave. I'm going to only really recommend one for now because I've found it's the toughest, and that is the philodendron McDowell. That is a really, really good one. Now, Gloriosum isn't too bad, but it is a little bit harder. Pastazanum is okay, but I think in terms of general hardiness, the hardiest heart leaf, you know, big exotic heart philodendron I've found so far is definitely the McDowell. So for unusual shaped leaves, you could go with a philodendron Florida ghost. Those are my favorite plants. Honestly, I have to, I, I won't get rid of either. I love them so much. If you love super, super hairy stems, then the easiest philodendron I have found so far for that is the philodendron serpents. Mind you, those stems are really, really hairy. Not just a little bit of fluff, they are full on hairy. So if that puts you off, maybe don't go for that. But if you're curious, do look them up. They're pretty awesome. In terms of longer leaves, the philodendron bilati is an absolutely beautiful philodendron to go for. They just look so majestic when they're sat there. They have beautiful, long pointed leaves and they have gorgeous orange stems. So that's a really, really nice one to try if you're looking for something longer leaved. And last but not least, the super exotic philodendron that I would class to be the most easiest. This may surprise you, but the philodendron luxuriance choco red, absolutely just mwah, one of the best philodendron ever. Absolutely beautiful philodendron. So much going on with that plant. I don't even know where to begin. That's reasonably easy to grow. But the thing that surprised me the most, one of the most easiest exotic philodendron to grow, at least for me, is the philodendron melanochrysum. Now, a lot of you might be quite shocked by that, but honestly, they're really tough. I've kind of just discovered this in the past month, but if you're scared to get a melanochrysum, honestly, don't be. They're really, really good. That concludes my video on philodendron care. If there's anything I've missed out or any additional tips you would like to provide anyone, you know, in the comment section, please feel free to leave them below. Similarly, if you have a problem with your philodendron, leave a comment. I'm sure either myself or someone else will be able to help you out with whatever care question that you have, especially if I haven't answered something in this video because I'm aware that there is a lot to cover and this is as kind of general as I can get it. So if you have any question about a specific plant, feel free to leave that below and I'm sure you'll be taken care of because this plant community is absolutely wonderful in terms of how much we help one another so don't be scared to leave a comment and as always if you like this video please leave a like it really really helps and for any additional updates on the plants that i currently own please feel free to follow me on instagram at let's wet my plants 
I know, it's a silly name. I thought it was funny at the time. Now we're stuck with it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it helped you out and I shall see you next week. Bye guys.